So we acknowledge that the land upon which we gather is traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. So call to order. Um, one thing I did mention at the last meeting on December 8th, that I know this is an important tool, our cell phone, but please try to be discreet and responsible with your use during council meetings because as Rory Chason told us, that live stream camera picks up a, a lot of information, including your screen. So I just want to caution you on uh, using your tech. The technology, definitely needed, but be discreet and uh, responsible. Any declarations of conflict of interest? Okay. On the agenda, I was asked by our chief engineer, Scott Adams, if we could move the um, public works and urban beautification to the first because he has to get home in, because of a family matter. So is that all right to put that at the first? Any problem? Good. And then planning and heritage would follow, human resources and so forth. So we have three sets of minutes, the regular monthly meeting for Nov November 14th, public planning meeting November 15th, special meetings November 24th, 28th, and December 8th. I need someone to move those meetings, minutes. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by Councillor Matard. All those in favor? Okay. Business arising out of the minutes. Any business arising out of the minutes? Okay, seeing none is, who, who leads this, Donna, on the, uh, okay, for public works? Is he here? He was. It's the last monthly council meeting. The Civic Board for Persons met November 10th with the draft minutes are included in your weekend package. And there's no resolutions to be forwarded. Your Worship, any questions? We'll certainly try to answer them. Thank you. Excuse me, Councillor Duran. You have a question, sir? Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, yeah, I have, I have two questions I had. I, I, Got a number of uh, calls this this weekend and today about the sidewalks being slippery and you know they've been seeing kids fall and uh, I have emailed uh, the manager and and he was kind enough to get back to me. Well, it was sunny and they were looking forward to the the sun melting it. But again today the the sidewalks aren't salted and uh, I just said I'd ask tonight uh, for the residents. Like I, I've been getting a lot of calls about that. So I don't, I don't know if anybody can explain that, why, why there's been no soft down or, like one, one lady in particular, she said, I, I, was, I had a walk in the front yard of someone's house and the sidewalk uh, plow with salt was going on the street the other way. And, and so I just said, listen, it, it's probably not in his route for where you were walking, but, but she said, well, why, why isn't it? You know, so anybody answer that? I just have two questions, but that's the one question. I will certainly bring it up to the public works manager. I thought he was here, but he was here. And uh, I mean, that's a great question, Councilor Drown, because it is that time of year or two where we got to be careful. But I don't see him, but we'll certainly make a note of it, you know, and get right back to you. Thank you. Sure. And there he is. Oh, there he is. Mr. Adams, we were just asked about the salt and sidewalks. Would you like to respond? Certainly. Uh, Your Worship, so uh, I assume it's regarding the email from the weekend? Yes, yep. So uh, we don't typically assault sidewalks after a snowstorm. Um, it, it's a case-by-case -case scenario. Uh, this one in particular, the reason why we didn't was because we, uh, uh, we were hoping for the sun to help everything out. My ball was a little wind. <laughs> I had to run from the car. Uh, but yeah, so that's why we do a case by case, and then we have crews that drive around. We find areas that are 
worse than others, we'll hand, hand bomb. Sure, and you usually do a great job in, in the, in the wintertime when there's snow and stuff, but I think the expectation from residents, Mitchell. like one lady called me first thing, I said, look, uh, you know, I, I don't know why, but I mean, we didn't do it. We we're hoping Mitchell. that it was gonna get warmer, but Mitchell. you know, I don't know what else to, to tell her. Like, she's like, I, I fell, I seen people fall. Like, what are you doing? I, I just said, look, so I'll bring it up tonight to see what he can say. So I, I guess we're gonna look at it more going forward or, like, I know we're, we're gonna have a storm in two days. So what if it's cold tomorrow and the ice is still there? Like, what, what happens? Your, uh, your Worship, so Go what ahead. we can do is I send an email too. We'll put something down paper on our decision making process okay. when we do that. And we'll share with the whole group here as well so that everyone can see how we go through that process and make the decision when we do uh, salt the entire city sidewalks versus just spot salting. Perfect. Cool. I just have one other question. Go ahead, and go was, ahead sir. It was regarding the, I, I know you see the staff and we, like we brought it up last year and brought it up this year and then um, the supervisor was here last month and I asked, um, the, the part-time people though are seasonal, they don't have winter coats. And uh, we, had, we had asked, you know, how many, how many of these people wouldn't have coats? Would you happen to have a number? Uh, I've asked that last month and I, you know, I just got a reminder, you know, how many people would, would we be looking at? Uh, Your Worship, I, I would have to look into that. I don't have that number off the top of my head. Okay, so what I'm saying, Your Worship, I guess budget time or, or whether it's, you know, I just I just find that the city corporation they're outside, they're working, and we don't have coats for them. So, is there a number like twenty, or is it <coughs> fifty or a hundred? Like, would you have a ballpark figure? I, I uh, unfortunately I don't today. No, okay. my apologies. All right, Councilor Duran, could he get that number and email it to us? Sure. Is that all right? Sure. That that would be great. Just because. You know, when we say it, it's a budgetary item, if there was only 20 coats, I'd pay for it myself. You know, but, but it gets to a point where if there's 100, then that's, that's something, you know, we'd be looking at. So, you know, we, we have to get them coats. They're outside in the cold working. So I guess with this new council, we'll, we'll have to deal with it fairly quickly, I hope. Thank you. And that will be an item dealt with at the operational and capital budget. Thank you. Your Worship. I think it also may be something to deal with uh, with the union contract. I'm not. Um, I know for our full time people, um, that's part of the union contract. You know, the clothing and what kind of clothing and how often they get it and that type of thing. I'm I'm not sure on the part time or on the on the entry on the seasonals and the entry level seasonals, but Mr. Adams will get back to you on that as well. Good with the numbers, okay, Mr. Adams. Um, Oh, just one second. Councillor Tweel. As to um, why the barricades weren't uh, put up down on Queen Street uh, regarding the rain event, and I'm talking primarily between let's say Douglas, which is taking Costello Lane, Reserve, down to uh, Conley, you can even stretch it to, to Pond Street for that matter. Uh, whatever ha whenever we do have a rain event, uh, the water rises three to four feet, maybe even higher. Uh, vehicles are driving through there, uh, taking liberty uh, with creating those unnecessary waves that flow into people's homes and their, and their uh, you know, some basement apartments in through there and causes considerable damage, then the onus is on the homeowner or property owner uh, to go through their insurance, which again, I'll stress is totally unnecessary. Uh, prior to the hurricane with Fiona, uh, we did have uh, rain during that event. And uh, I'm, I'm looking for a report as to why those barricades were not put up. Your Worship, uh, Mr. Adams did re provide the report to me and it's still on my desk. I had some follow-up questions. You'll get it before the end of the week, Councillor. Okay. Just a follow-up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, CAO Donna. Um, and I'm hoping from here on in, when I do send an email in, 
uh, with that reasonable request that there is going to be predictability, there's going to be consistency, so that the community, the people that live in that neighborhood, are going to uh, have an expectation that uh, the, those barricades are going to be put up and then hopefully we'll come up with a solution as to how we're going to deal with that rising water. Uh, that, that particular part of Queen Street is narrow and uh, the residents uh, have tremendous anxiety and are fearful when, whenever uh, any type of an event takes place when water, water is rising to three and four feet or, or even more. So we've got to, uh, you know, we got to bring our A, A game. I can tell you we didn't bring our A game in that last rain event. So thank you, uh, CAO Donna. Thank you, Councilor Twill. Councilor Yankoff. Oh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Yankoff. Thank you. Do I have to do anything else? I missed nope, the instruction manual. Just to circle back on Council Duran's um, questions on the sidewalks, once the manager of the department gets the um, information and the policy, the processes around it, could that also be sent out through comms as a PSA so the entire um, community could actually see it as well and we could share it on our socials? Thank you. Did you take note of that, Mr. Adams? Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions to Councilor Rams, your chief engineer? No? You have a supplementary question there, Councilor Twill? In effect now with respect to towing. Um, it, does towing and ticketing, is that an automatic or is it just when the snow is being pulled and removed on a particular street, or do you actually send the police in to issue tickets, and in some cases tow? I'm looking for uh, specifics and a clarification on that. Uh, your, your Worship, so at this time, we have not uh, requested the police department to go in and ticket and tow anyone at this time during the winter. Um, our practice always has and will continue to be. Um, that will only be in effect when we are actually in winter operation or wind plowing mode or, or snow removal mode. Um, so that's our typical practice and that's what it will continue to be. Supplementary the supplementary? Yes. Oh, okay. So, if you were going to, uh, uh, let's say you're not going to pull and remove the snow on Oliver Street, mm -hmm. you're just pushing the snow aside. So are you going to be ticketing and uh, removing vehicles. So you're going to be giving that specific information out to the community. So your worship, we don't give specifics to what streets we're going to. It is way too difficult uh, to predict at 2.30 when we make that call, if we want the snow alert to go on, which alerts the public, but please find alternate parking, uh, uh, alternate parking solutions. Uh, we don't know what streets we're going to be on that night. You know, we could have to go down every street. We may not. Um, so, um, you know, you might get lucky. We may not go down a street on a night that's a snow haul and may not get ticket or towed. You may get ticket and towed down one night. So we just, it's a blanket because again, we cannot provide that. There are so many things that change in the run of a night that we cannot provide that list of what streets we're going on. Uh, especially like on a snow haul, I've seen some nights where we going into the night, we may expect to only get maybe a dozen streets done and we're able to get 14 or 15 streets done. If we didn't, if we broadcast to the public what streets we're going to, then that really restricts if we can do more work and be more efficient. So it's really hard to do that. So we've never done that. CAO, Donna? I wonder, for the sake of the new councillors, Mr. Adams, could you explain what you mean by the snow alert? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Um, so, uh, so we have a system here at the city. Um, it's called the snow alert. Um, so our superintendents uh, every day at approximately 1.30 uh, make a decision based on what we predict for the, or what the weather is calling for that evening between the hours 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Um, if the snow alert is on, uh, a message gets broadcasted on our website, and I believe Com sends out a uh, social media uh, advisories uh, through all our channels, and I believe something does go potentially out to the radio stations. Um, that is to advise the public that we will be planning on sending our winter, or we expect to send out our winter equipment out to remove snow, plow snow, salt. 
Um, so please seek alternate parking arrangements because we, if we are get to a street where we can't plow, we can't salt, uh, we do ask the police to ticket and tow you so that we can safely remove the snow or remove the ice or whatever we need to do. Okay, Mr. Adams, thank you very much. Could I just ask one question before you leave? So what's the final date for the Ellens Creek box installation? Uh, as of right now, uh, we just talked to the contractor this afternoon. We are expecting uh, asphalt on the 20th, next Tuesday. December 20th, 2022. Okay. Correct. Uh, he's asking one lane, two lane? Uh, we expect by the end of the day, it'll be open to two lanes. Great. Council Bernard. Yeah, I just want to say, I think to add to what the manager is saying is, nice that you're just going to salt. It's also a night that if, if, the, if the cars are on the side of the road in the way, like some people may think, well, they're not going to plow snow tonight. Well, if they're going to salt and they have some roads that are difficult to get down, they will, they will tow and pull out too. So it's that for is, salting too. That is correct because, uh, you know, we try to salt as we're going down, for instance, Kent Street, the parking stalls get salted as well. Um, and we also, some of the narrow streets, our trucks can't turn down or get onto some of the narrow streets if there's vehicles parked. So we will have to tow even if we're salting. So again, that's why we say it, winter operations are expected tonight. It could be salting, it could be plowing or snow removal. Councilor Tart. Tart. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to acknowledge the Belvedere roundabout has opened up. Uh, as a person who drives through there regularly, I can say uh, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's very efficient. I know there's still a lot of work that is occurring around there with some sidewalks and lightage, but I just wanted to say kudos to uh, the city for uh, the roundabout in that area as it borders in War Two. So thank you. Supplementary to the supplementary. Yes. I read recently in the news that the Minister of Transportation and Public Works, a uh, gentleman from the MLA from Montague, offered the city a solution uh, regarding a temporary bridge, and the city said no. Number one, is that true? And number two, if the city said no, why did you say no? So very early on, Your Worship, so very early on in the planning phase, uh, we were looking at all options for traffic. Um, to put a temporary bridge in, you would have to infill a large section of the creek beside it because you've got to build abutments so that the bridge can sit on. It has to be far enough away from the area that we're working so we can complete our work satisfactory uh, uh, without it impacting uh, the work. There was also a number of work that had to be done on, not at the box culvert, but on either side of the box culvert. So there was a storm line that we had to connect to, or sorry, a sewer line that had to be connected um, right out by the daycare, which was underneath the road. Um, pu uh, very large, I think it was eight feet or 10 feet uh, excavation. It would have been a significant amount of excavation and fill brought in to put a bridge in significant dollars. That is if the Department of Fisheries and Oceans and if the Department of Environment would issue us a permit to do so. We had some, uh, I wouldn't say, we had some preliminary unofficial discussions with some officials. Uh, our engineering consultant had some calls with them uh, to see if this was potentially an option. They will not give you an answer, a full blown answer or a written response unless you do a full blown design and all that. But the discussion at that time was said it was not likely they would approve such work because of the significant destruction or excavation of the surrounding creek that we would have had to do to fit in this bridge. So we said at that time there was no sense of going through the entire design process, which costs thousands of dollars, uh, for them to potentially reject that plan. So, and delay our project as well, because it's just another piece of the puzzle that you have to design. So at the end of the day, when we got to that decision making, because they did not, the word that we got was, it didn't think, they didn't think they would approve it. We said we would continue on with the full closure and all traffic would be diverted to the main point. Thank you there, Chief Engineer. Okay, can, another question, John? No, John, you have to, go ahead, John. 
uh, Councilor McNamara. Just fair to say then, head of Bally Bridge, if that's the, I think that's the term that's been used. Uh, it's a Bailey Bridge. Bailey Bridge, sorry. <laughs> Bailey Bridge, uh, we'd still be waiting. If so, yes, yeah, so it could have delayed the project too because there would be a number of weeks to install this work and the Bailey Bridge and all that stuff too. And it's still, it'd be shut down for it, a longer period it of time. Been, yes, it, it's, again, hard to say those schedules without going through the whole process, but uh, yes, it could have been. Thank you, sir. Okay, <laughs> Councilor Ramsey, good to go? Yes. Uh, we're good to go, Your Worship, and there's no resolutions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very God. much. So planning and heritage, is that uh, Councillor McCabe? Right on. Thank you, Your Worship. The Planning and Heritage Committee did not meet in December, so there will be no minutes or reports attached. Planning Board also did not meet in December. The Heritage, Her Heritage Board met Monday, November 28th, and copies of the Heritage Board report and minutes are included in your package. The Design Review Board did not meet. The Affordable Housing Advisory Committee did meet on November 15th. Their meeting uh, minutes are in your package. We have two resolutions to be put forward tonight for planning and heritage. One's a signing authority, and one is design review heritage board members. So I'll let the CAO proceed. Uh, Donna, I think there's some questions on the report. Could you, Councillor Twilley, get a question on the report? Uh, thank you. Thank you for your report. Councillor McCabe, um, recently I've been reading uh, <clears throat> statements being made by personnel in the uh, development, housing and development portfolio that's responsible for the mobile units that are being uh, opened up for, uh, for the homeless and for people who don't have a place to stay. Now back on October the 13th, and October the 15th, October the 13th, we, um, we deferred the, uh, the resolution to, to get more information for the residents that live on Park Street and Beach Street, as I can recall. And there are a number of items in that particular resolution, which I have a copy with me here tonight. And then subsequently, on October the 15th, council voted unanimously to accept the uh, terms and conditions of that particular resolution. One of the issues that I spoke to in that particular even was I questioned the hours of operations from 8 p.m. to 8, 8 a.m. And I think it was uh, Shelley Cole, mm. paraphrasing here, said that, well, it was, uh, it was the city, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, it was the city that made the determination as to the hours of operation which I found quite strange. And uh, uh, I know our, our CAO was involved in some of them discussions and negotiations. But I'm looking for, I'm looking for a clarification. And I don't, I don't believe it was our negotiating uh, points that we negotiated. So uh, I think there needs to be a clarification in the media that, um, that no, this wasn't a request or a stipulation that the city of Charlottetown or city council had uh, illustrated in this particular resolution. In fact, I, I argued, I thought quite compellingly that night that, uh, that there shouldn't be hours of operation and, and having, uh, you know, these folks go out, particularly in, on, a, on a morning like this, you know, tomorrow morning, for example, have to be out, out of the shelter at eight o'clock in the morning and can't come back till eight o'clock at night, which I, I find, uh, I don't know, there's many, many words to describe it, but uh, I'll keep it on the high road here uh, this evening. So I'd like to know where the hours of operation came from. Was this, this uh, stipulation, I believe, that the province had insisted upon uh, with putting in this particular resolution where there's a number, number of terms and conditions. So we, we need a clarification on that. I'd like to get a communication out to the, to the community and, and yep. if that's the case, I would certainly make an amendment to that resolution so that, that these particular folks do not have to leave at 8 o'clock in the morning and cannot return till 8 o'clock in the evening. Similarly, same thing with Bedford McDonald House, which we, I think we're, we contribute about 15,000. We do. We do. And, and they can't, 
enter the facility, eight o'clock at night, and you see them lined up, um, you know, in the evenings, and which I, I find very, very, uh, very hard to watch. So I'd like to try to see what we can do to A, uh, set the record straight, and B, being proactive to see what we can do to help assist these people. Thank you. Councilman, Councilman McCabe. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Councillor Twill, for your questions. I can tell you that the application you're referring to came in from the province with those conditions, but Alex, I'll let you elaborate in a minute about some of that. And certainly with some of your ideas around collaborate, collaboration and partnership, that would be something that maybe would be discussed um, at committee level, level moving forward. But as far as the actual application and the stipulations, they would not, we didn't, that was an application, from my understanding, that came into the city from the province. Those were part of the development agreement conditions that were put on. But Alex, you might want to elaborate a little bit more if that's not quite clear enough. Uh, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through to Councillor McCabe. Yeah, so the province uh, made a submission to us, and which is typical of any submission when you're going to the public or for, for clarification. Uh, they, they indicated what they were looking for. They, they placed the hours in. Uh, she may be alluding to the fact once they made their submission, uh, because that's what's being communicated to the public, then staff ask that those terms and conditions, the proposal that came in is the proposal that is reflected in the terms and conditions. So clearly we, re we, we required them to be terms and conditions, but that's what they had asked for. The 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. was their, uh, their original submission, which we uh, turned into the terms and conditions that Councillor Twill is referring to. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Twill and then Councillor Yank, Deputy um, Mayor Yankoff. I want to thank you, Alex, for that uh, clarification and setting the record straight. Well, then, that message needs to be conveyed to the community because what's being conveyed, whether it's intentionally or not intentionally, is that the city <coughs> of Charlottetown set the terms and conditions for the, you know, having to be out at 8 a.m. We cannot return to 8 p.m. So I think we need to do... Uh, we need to set the record straight and get that message out to the community. And I'll go on the record now saying, again, that as, as a member of city council, I think we need to uh, request to the province to change those hours of operation uh, to give people the opportunity yeah. to, to, uh, to be able to commute up and down, uh, whether it be Park Street or Beach Street or however they are arrived at this at the, uh, the new location, uh, an opportunity to have that flexibility. So I've, I've been reading what's, what's being said here, and it, it, uh, it troubles me that, you know, it was the city of Charlottetown that, that set the terms and, the, and the conditions when that's not true. No, it's not true. Okay. okay. Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Yankop, and then uh, Councilor Matard. Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, j just to reiterate on Councilor Twill's um, concern around the hours of operation and that it was a request from the province of PEI, if in fact the province was to change those hours to a 24-hour service, that would be, correct me if I'm wrong, just a request into the planning department, then to the city for just a small change in their development agreement. Is that correct? So it would still have to come from the province to request that. We can't request to them, or can we? Thank you. It, it was it was really their application. So we, and back to Councillor, uh, you know, uh, Tweel's comment. It is our term and condition, but it's our term and condition at their request, right? So the you know it's one of those things. Both is a little bit true. We apply the terms and conditions, <laughs> but that they, that's what they ask for. Uh, staff can't change that as a term and condition. That would have to come back. That's a council dictated term and condition. You as a council would have to change that if they wanted to be more flexible. We could facilitate that, bring it back to you. Uh, but uh, it, it's not something that we, it's not a minor change that staff could deal with. Thank you. Councilor Matard. Uh, well, on the topic, I had the opportunity on Saturday to um, visit the Parkdale uh, Emergency Shelter. Uh, there was an open house, and while I was there, it was advised by the operations team there that mayor and council come to the facility to do a walkthrough, uh, as I did. Uh, you may have already been there. I'm not suggesting nobody was there, um, but I strongly will put that out as a recommendation that we come together as mayor and council 
for this issue as the city, not as a Ward 2 issue, and we come together and we go down and uh, tour the facility and we can all be on the same page and get some information that, you know, maybe, uh, you know, that, you know, exactly what you're asking, uh, Councilor Tuil, there might be some questions that we can ask to get some clarifications on some things. So, thank you. Deputy Mayor Yankoff. Just, just um, through the chair to the manager of planning, just to be clear, I didn't get, I don't think I heard the answer and I apologize if you said it and I didn't hear it. So who makes the request? Does, does, does council make the request for 24 hours or does the province send a request in and then it comes to council and the change in the development agreement? I didn't hear what the process was. Uh, Your Worship, I'm not certain, you know, again, if, if what, what uh, Councillor Tweel is alluding to, that they're, they, it sounds like they're flexible now in regard to those terms and conditions. I mean, we've set the terms and conditions, or you've set the terms and conditions. That's what's been conveyed to the public. If uh, I would suggest if they wanted to uh, make the change, because uh, you, you, th that process is already completed, and the terms and conditions have been set. So uh, you've given your direction. If they want to change that direction, they can come back to you folks through the planning department. We'll facilitate it, and you can make that determination. Thank you, Bishop. And Councilor Matard, I, I think that the, the visit that you per, per, that you took, uh, took 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 advantage of was on Saturday. They also mentioned at that tour that it was eight to eight. And uh, I asked the same question the Friday because I did the tour on the Friday last Friday. And right now, this is just to get the operation going. But if there will be any changes, they'll have to make that change. As Mr. Forbes said, we'll have to make it to council because it's a development agreement. And the only way you can change that development agreement, council has to agree to it. Same as the temporary occupancy permit. To extend it beyond one year, it has to come back here. Alex? Uh, Your Worship, just on this one, this was a variance, so there was no development agreement. The development agreement okay. is, in fact, the terms and conditions. There is no separate development agreement, okay. but it is Thank these you. terms. Thank you. Councilor Matard. Yeah, so there was lots of information provided regarding the operations of the facility, which did include the uh, time of which they leave and come back and they're bust and the process to come back and line up and, you know, get back in. Uh, so, I, you know, I will say there was a lot of great information and it did really help to get a better understanding of, of the operations that we're undertaking down there. So, again, I'll extend out that, uh, you know, uh, invitation, I guess, on, on part of, uh, you know, a council as a whole. Thank you. Yeah, and we can work through Sherry Lynn Lafferty. She's the EA to the minister, Minister McKay, and they can set something up. Is that all right, Councilor Matard? Yes. Good. Okay. Do we have a couple of resolutions? Yep. Moved by Councillor McCabe and seconded by De Deputy Mayor Yankoff. That pursuant to the requirements of Section 2 of the Planning Act, RSPEI 1988, Cap P8, and the requirements of Section 2.1 of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD2, Council hereby appoints Greg Morrison as a designate development officer to administer provi provisions of the zoning and development bylaw and any other bylaws under the Planning and Heritage Department regarding licensing inspection applications and that this designation of authority shall cease if the job duties of this employee no longer requires the designation if the employee terminates employment with the City of Charlottetown or upon further written notice. Questions called. I've got a question. Okay, Councilor hold on. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Greg Morrison used to be with the city of Charlottetown. Yes. So, if I understand, he's going to be working a contract? On a contract basis. On a contract. So, is he still able to work with the private sector? He signed a, yes, he is. So, how does that work? It, we've got a conflict. We've um, done an agreement here. You know, Mr. Uh, for a private development firm, and what we've uh, agreed with Mr. Morrison is that, that he will not issue permits for the part of the uh, development industry that his firm is involved in. 
So uh, it's where Mr. Uh, Morrison will be doing smaller scale permits that his company doesn't engage in. So we're, we're, he's, he's aware of uh, you know, potential conflicts as, as are we. So uh, we're uh, purposely sending him permits that will be uh, uh, you know, uh, type, the types of permits that his firm does not compete in or uh, offer services in. And Mr. Forbes. This position is definitely needed because the backlog in planning and development is substantial. Like, they need lots of help down there. Okay, questions called? You got a follow up? Okay, go ahead. So, so um, thank you for your clarification, Mr. Forbes. So, from your perspective, there's not going to be any potential for conflicts of interest, and we're not going to hear that through the grapevine, correct? Well, I, I guess it, you folks are uh, schooled on it. There's always the potential for, for conflict, but the fact is Mr. Morrison, Mr. Morrison uh, is aware of uh, the situation he's in, and, uh, and again, we're, aware, we're more aware of it than he is possibly aware of it, and he's only going to be providing, it's, it's, it's a few hours a week on small permits, take the pressure off. The minute we uh, get the appropriate hires, the nice thing with Mr. Morrison, who has agreed to come back, his attitude is you, you can cancel this within a, like a day. I mean, he's, he's really here to help move some permits for us in this interim period. I'm hoping it's gonna be shorter than longer, but it's, uh, it will provide some relief in regard to people who are trying to get, uh, the, the issue with permits is your permit is as important as the biggest permits, <laughs> but the reality, is he will stay out of that space that his firm is operating. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Tron. Uh, thank you, Mayor Brown. I, I have to, uh, congratulate you, Alex, for, for this. Um, we had a discussion a, a couple of weeks ago, and, and I know the planning department is under tremendous pressure. This week, I've had a number of developers say, what's going on there? And, you know, we had no answers last week, and then you, you come up with this. Greg Morrison is a 100% terrific person, and, and I'm very happy that he came back to help out. And, and again, I have to congratulate you for looking outside of the box to, to get help uh, and help the city out. So I appreciate that, Alex. Thank you. Okay, question was called. Now, I, can I, I just have to do this right. Check out the box. Okay. And now you can vote. So you can vote uh, using your console. Yes or no? It should be right there. Yes. Yeah. All votes in? Okay. So it's 10 0. That should be on your screen. Look at that. It works. <laughs> oh, jeez. Huh? Why is that little space at the top? I guess that must be the tiebreaker. <laughs> okay. Accept. Do you get another one? for the Heritage Board until March 31st, 2022. Aaron Stafford, Simon Moore, Tara Maloney, Wayne McKinnon. And lastly, that pursuant to the requirements of Section 2.3 of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, PHZD-2, uh, Council hereby appoints Greg Munn as a member of the Design Review roster, replacing Aaron's Aaron Stafford. Now, th there's just one, one amendment issue there. It should be March 31st, 2023. It's just a small, the date should be 20. And again, this is only to hold us over until we do the appointments. This is the previous board that's just holding us over so that we can get the new appointments to the board. That's all it is. Okay. There should be two of them. Questions called? Okay, so just let me do open this up. Okay, you can vote. Okay, 
I'll vote in. Want to come up the screen? Oh, there we are again. Look at that, Tracy. It's working. Okay, just one second. Okay, is that it there, Councillor uh, McCabe? That's it, your report? Great. Uh, Alex, thank you again. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, the next report is... Just going back to my... Human resources. Human resources and Deputy Mayor Yankoff. since our last meeting so therefore we have no resolutions however I did just want to point out that last month Councillor Duran who had been asking several months about the uh, naming policy and I did want to let you know that I did discuss this with um, CAO Donna Waddell today and this will be something that the new committee will be um, working on right away so I just wanted to let you know that they haven't forgotten about it thank you if I, anyone has any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Did you want to follow, follow up, Councillor Tron, on that issue? Sure, I, I, I yeah. will. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you, you know, the new committee looking at it. I know we've been looking at this for a year or more, and, uh, you know, it's, I just want to get this going for the naming rights for the park in Centennial, uh, Centennial Park, and, and you know, I've I've mentioned Roger Burt. He was a, a big part of this park. So, you know, I, I I struggle to understand why we can't do it now. But I've I've been I've been waiting to get this on the agenda. I guess from Parks and then Public Works. Now it's back to HR, and I, I just want to get this done. Uh, you know, there was a gentleman there that that really contributed to the park immensely, and uh, you know, I I appreciate you looking at it and. and getting it towards council right away. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Yanka, that's good. That's it. Okay, that's the report. Okay, N thank you very much. You got a question there? Follow up? Okay. Uh, um, can you give, please give me an update with regards to the governance review, uh, which you know, is gonna come back to council with respect to the organizational chart and how that's going to be uh, illustrated and and a follow-up to that would be will council be determining the organizational chart and how uh, going forward how the, the city is going to be set up structurally Thank you um, Council Twill. I think I'll defer to our CAO for that update Thank you Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Take off. Uh, the governance report is due by the end of January, Councillor Tweel. Indeed, it, it, there will it will be you will be advised about it, but it, it will be the, the decision of the new CAO on how exactly how the structure. But I expect the new CAO will be looking for in, input from the councillors. I, I expect that there will. I don't know, quite frankly, whether they'll come forward with with two or three examples of different or. Um, but I, I anticipate uh, the report is due at the end of January, um, and it, because it is operational, how the city is run, it is the new. It, is, it will be the new CAO who will be making those decisions. But the report will be coming to you. Maybe hey, okay. There you are. Go ahead. Um, so. So the decision will fall strictly with the authority of the chief administrative office in terms of how the organization is going to be set up and who's going to be reporting to who and, and, and how the services are going to be delivered to the citizens of Charlottetown and what the expectations can or may or may not be. Um, what happens if this council, the new council, decides that uh, we're not really satisfied with the current arrangement where CAO, according to the MGA, or the interpretation of the MGA, 
has all this power, and council would like to have a say on the structure, uh, how the organizational chart is set up, and and uh, be a little more accountable and responsible to the citizens in terms of how the organization is going to run. Um, this is no disrespect uh, to the you know to you as our CAO, but um, I find that under the uh, current MGA, there's a tremendous amount of power in the office of the CAO and City of Charlotte and the council that's, that just went through a city election ha has no power, even though, yeah, we can entice and encourage the, the, the new CAO. Uh, I still think that uh, we need to swing the pendulum back at least half ways where council is involved with when we're talking about the structure and the senior structure and how things are going to unfold in terms of accountability and responsibility. Thank you. Donna, as CAO, could we just go with uh, Councillor McCabe first? Do you want to just, and then you can respond, please. Thank you. It's more a comment and follow up, and I guess a reminder probably based on what we've just heard is that our role as elected officials is not to get involved in the operations of the city. We're here for governance of policy and procedure, and the only person that we are responsible to oversee as far as staff of the city is the actual CAO. I'm sure a CAO would be open to hearing any input or any ideas that we as council might have to, to provide as far as the betterment of the city, but as far as getting involved in any of the operations of the city, that's not what our job is. Deputy Mayor Yankov, did you want to follow up on that uh, from Human Resources, or do you want to just leave it? Could you just... Okay, oh, yeah. thank you, Sorry. I got it. Um, I could just echo what Councilman McCabe said is, I mean, we've all just been through it. Two more onboarding sessions with reminders of what our role is as city councillors and, um, and that we do need to stay in our own lane and our own lane is that we are responsible for the CAO of the city and uh, they are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. Thank you. Okay, can we, Emily, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Say the same to Fifi. Is it Fifi? Phoebe. Phoebe. <laughs> okay. Protective and emergency services. Who is doing the report? Okay, Council Ramsey. I'm playing a number of I, roles. I'm getting lots of airtime tonight. Uh, we did not meet, uh, the Protective Emergency Service Committee did not meet the last uh, regular meeting. There are two resolutions for your for your consideration, and we received some emails that was on uh, on the committee for your considerations. But uh, that's about it. If we have any questions, if I can't answer them, our chief is here, so we can go right ahead, Your Worship. Yeah, both Chief Brad McConnell and our new fire chief Tim Mamie. Yes, yeah, so congratulations, I'd like to, Tim. I'd like oh. to congratulate Tim on his uh, on his appointment. Yeah. Great job, Tim. Thank you. Okay, I'm going with Councilor Drawn. Thank you, Mayor Brown, and thank you for your report, Councilor Ramsey. Um, I, I know, you know, I guess it, this falls under the, the police mandate, but I don't know uh, where it goes. Um, you know, the, the Park Street shelter was opened last week, um, you know, 25 beds available, and I was talking to some construction workers there as well. And they, they have pressure on them to get the next 25 uh, beds open and, and uh, running as quickly as possible. But where, where does it follow that we can clean, clean up the area down by the entry to the city? Um, I know it would probably be under the direction of the police and public works, but who makes that determination when we're going to clean it up? You know, I've been getting a lot of calls that you know, it's, it's quite unsightly, and, and we have here a, a couple of uh, unsightly bylaws where, you know, the, the owners, you know, won't clean them up, and we're going to clean it up for them. But, you know, this is a, quite, a, uh, quite a place down there now, and I, I can't say too much about it. I've been down there, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that now the, the shelters are up and running, but if people don't go to the shelters and they're allowed to stay there, you know, what, what happens, where, where we are, and who, who makes the decision? Oh, 
Good questions. Councillor Ramsey, do you want to defer that to the Chief of Police? Uh, yes, thank you for that. Yes, <coughs> Chief, Fire and Police, I guess we're probably be both involved in this, wouldn't you not? Your Worship, I'll answer in, uh, from the police perspective for sure. Um, certainly, it's incumbent upon us to work with the other stakeholders involved in the situation, uh, the landowners um, and other groups to ensure that uh, um, that those bylaws are met, but also that in these very difficult times that there's a certain uh, patience and tolerance. And uh, uh, But certainly, uh, we have been in discussions with those stakeholders and we'll continue on it. And, uh, We'll keep uh, our committee updated and council updated on that progress. Just a follow up there. That's a okay. follow up. Thank you. No, just one second. Okay, just one second there, sir. Go ahead. And I can I can appreciate that. And uh, but what I'm hearing from people that you know, I get the rumor mills, and then the residents call me and say, "Well, what are you going to do with it?" And I, I'm like, "Well, okay." I'll, I'll ask tonight. Um, you hear the rumor that, you know, that's not suitable, the shelter. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay here. So where do we go from that? Is, is like, what part or, or, or what, what part of the corporation determines that we're not accepting this anymore and we're going to have to clean that area up? So who makes that decision with the, the CAO, the mayor, the council? Like, where, where are we going? I mean, it's, we're going to have the next 25 open fairly quickly and it's up to us to make a decision to 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 clean it up so who who makes the decision here I, I know it's you know you're you're probably given a direction at, at some point but where in the corporation gives gives the and decision. Councillor Duran I have asked the same question so I'm going to ask the CAO and uh, the chief if they can work together in this just Donna do you want to uh, the landowner will be the primary person and um, so we will if eventually we will look to the owner of the property to clean up the property and if they don't then they then it would come here um, like any other property but the pro property owner will be the one who will be responsible no CADC we're, 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 we are a shareholder but the majority but the majority shareholder is the province Prince of Brown at 82 percent we're at 15 but when they do take a vote, the board is made up of more members from the province than from the city. Councillor Beck. Is the uh, discussion on that previous, is, is that all done? I can allow that to wrap up if you're like, or no, no. good? No, okay. Unless Councillor Duran wants to follow up, but he'll, he'll follow up if you, if you want to. Yeah, I, I just Beck. had a question about these two properties, and I'm just trying to get some enlightened here a little bit. I did look at the 177 Mount Edward Road and understand the requirement for um, cleanup and removal. Uh, I, I don't under, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe I'm missing something when I looked at the 70 to 80. I don't know what, what we're looking at cleaning up there on 70 to 80 Kent Street. Uh, when I looked there, I just saw the, uh, I just saw the receptacles for the Waste Watch management and I just don't understand. I, I'm, I'm not questioning the need for it. I just would like an explanation as to why we, or what are we doing and what is the cleanup that is required or the remediation that's required on that, that particular. I'm okay with the Mount Edward Road one, uh, but the other one I just need a little bit of clarification on. Councillor Beck, could we just leave that when the resolution comes up and then the, the chief can answer to it? Is that all right, chief? It's just the resolution have to be put on the floor first and that's when we ask the questions. It's just a point of order. That's all it is, sir. Good? Sorry. Donnie, do you want to read the first one? Moved by Councillor Ramsey and seconded by Councillor Duran. The public, the public works manager be authorized to cut grass, remove any garbage and other materials or debris, fill in foundation hole, clean up, and properly dispose of same at the expense of the owner at location 177 Mount Edward Road, PID number 390294, in accordance with the terms of the dangerous, hazardous, and unsightly bylaw of the City of Charlottetown. Questions called? And you can vote. Yeah, yeah you voted. Don't, you can't vote twice. 
Okay, good. There it is, 10 0. Moved by Councillor Ramsey and seconded by Councillor Duran that the public works manager be authorized to remove any garbage and other materials or debris, clean up, and properly dispose of same at the owner's expense at the following properties located at 7880 Kent Street, PID number 342204, in accordance with the terms of the dangerous, hazardous, and unsightly bylaw of the City of Charlottetown. So, Councillor Beck, do you want to ask your, repeat your question, or are you all right with the question there, Chief? Just one second. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, Kevin, I'm just trying to get back to where it is. Here we are. Yeah. I've been receiving phone calls on this property from businesses along this area, and I just had to, had to sort of focus in, like, the garbage and everything was not out front, it was out back and everything. And uh, our bylaw officer went and talked to them and they said they're gonna clean it up. And then they didn't clean it up. He went back to them again with their second warning or third warning, I can't remember how many warnings he gave them, Chief. But uh, so he, if it is cleaned up now, our bylaw officer had to go back two or three times to remind those people to clean it up. And that, that was the purpose of it. Now, I haven't been by it lately, but you might see the two garbage cans up front, but it's in back of the building and everything along that line. Thank you. Councilor Beck, is that good for you? Is that all right? The response? Okay. So you can all vote now. Yeah, just one second. You probably should also know is <clears throat> once you pass this resolution, although what Councilor Ramsey just said, and they may have just cleaned it up the last couple of days, this does keep it open for an extended period of time. If it happens again, we don't have to come back to council and do this all over again. It's an extended period. I think it's six weeks or whatever, whatever that extended period is. So, thank you. Votes in? Okay. I think someone didn't vote. I'm 9 0. Now, do I close that to get another vote or just. Yeah, let's go back to the old way. Put up your hand, please. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, ten zero. Okay, thank you. Show how you voted. Yeah, it, that doesn't show that on that my screen. No. Okay. Anyways, ten zero. Do you have a question, Council Twill? Go ahead. number of weeks I've been hearing concerns from the residents regarding uh, uh, waste watch pickup whether it be black bins or green bins and being there on time uh, missing schedules uh, streets being missed all together and then having neighborhoods have having to wait another three and four weeks chief I'm not sure if um, you know the department has discussed this particular issue, but, um, and I'm not sure if it's Todd Suckler, our by law enforcement officer, that would explore uh, these disparities and discrepancies. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it seems to be a, uh, an ongoing issue in, in, in recent months, months. So I'd like you to take that under advisement and to find out why um, a service delivery doesn't seem to be the same and it doesn't seem to have the same consistency or doesn't seem to have that predictability. So I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but uh, this, this seems to be uh, seems to be an issue that's that's ongoing here in recent weeks and recent months. Yeah. And 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 uh, our CAO, um, Donna, maybe maybe there needs to be a meeting with Island Waste Management to discuss why there are disparities and why there are deficiencies. And discrepancies. Okay. Councillor Ramsey. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Tweel. In fact, I received an email today from one resident, and then she just emailed me back when we're coming in. They were by today to fix up her issue. But as you read in the press and read from Waste Watch, whatever it is, it's a Crown Corporation, but as you read in it, 
they're short of staff, mm -hmm. they're short of employees. They, they were, since Fiona, I guess they're way behind the eight ball is the things that I understood and I mm -hmm. read. And uh, just like every other thing going on in the city, like they just can't retain staff because they've been working 18, 20 hours a, week, a day. And, and that's my opinion on it. But as yeah. I said, I received an email this morning and then the lady got back to me this afternoon and said they were by and they, they picked up mine. So I don't know how they're operational. Yeah. Thank and you. Councilor Ramsey, just to add to that, it is, as you said, a Crown Corporation. It's responsible to the province. So those constituents that are calling you, they should be going through their MLA. That's, I've been getting those calls and I've been telling them, okay, where do you live? I live in Brighton Road. Okay, that's District 13. Here's your MLA. Here's the number. You want an email? I'll give you an email too. Councilor Twill. And, and I agree with that, that format that, you know, it's, it's time some of these MLAs come to the forefront and start to deal with some of these, these particular issues. But nonetheless, when garbage starts to pile up, I mean, I've seen some pictures. Yeah. Uh, Horrible, horrible pictures, for example, you know, senior citizen homes and the garbage just laying there and piling up and piling up and piling up. There doesn't seem to be any accountability whatsoever. So I know it's a crown corporation and I know the onus and responsibilities on members of the legislative assembly, but we also have a responsibility too when, uh, you know, when this garbage is piling up and piling up and piling up because it becomes uh, a health hazard. Uh, you know, uh, it's attracting wildlife, rodents. Uh, I, I don't have to be any more specific than I, I currently am, but uh, I think we better be aware that there are, there are situations in our community that are happening, and uh, these are health hazards, and we better, we better get a grip on it one way or another. Oh, good point, because that's why we have the bylaw on dangerous, hazardous, and unsightly bylaw of the city of Charlottetown. So if residents want to report that to the bylaw enforcement officer, correct, Chief? Then we'll follow up with the resolution that will come to this council to clean it up. And if they want to pay, pay. But if they don't, we'll find another way to get the money. Correct? That's correct, Richard. Okay. Is that it, Donna? Oh, sorry, Councillor McAleer. Yeah. yeah, go right ahead, sir. Yeah, just, uh, I guess maybe for the fire chief, just uh, on fire calls, just um, looking year over year, just uh, November uh, 21, 22. If I'm looking at this right, uh, 2022, 949 calls, and 2021, 672. It's around a the difference there, 275 calls up. I'm guessing that might have something to do with Fiona. Uh, very much so, yes. Uh, Councilor, through your worship. Um, yes, the, the increase in call volume there uh, substantially through, the, especially that particular count is, uh, is all due to Fiona and Fiona-related responses. Okay, thank you very much, Councilor McAleer. So the next report is Council Advisory Committee, Deputy, Deputy Mayor, Nankoff. Thank you. Okay. Thank so. you, Your Worship. The um, Council Advisory Committee has not met and um, there's no resolutions. So if anyone has any questions, I dare say that probably this committee is pretty well concluded, but we'll see how that goes tonight. Thank you. Next report, parks, recreation, and leisure activities. Councillor Terry Bernard, Ward 10, and, and his trustee manager, Frank Wynn. Here we go. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Your Worship, parks, recreation, and leisure is met on December the 6th. Uh, we have three resolutions for council consideration, Your Worship, and uh, I'll just speak on them for a sec. Uh, these resolutions, Your Worship, are major components to getting the facility underway, <clears throat> and they do include uh, site preparation, concrete, underground services, uh, the elevator. Uh, Your Worship, with the pre-engineered steel already ordered and due to arrive in April, <clears throat> we will now uh, start to see the new facility take its shape. So looking forward to seeing these three resolutions get through. And Your Worship, just for the new councillors, I uh, just wanted to give a little, little bit of background. Um, the new facility will be a state-of-the-art facility that the residents will be proud of. It will consist of a six-lane competitive pool with wheelchair access. Uh, the washrooms and that around the pool area are also wheelchair access. 
uh, NHL sized ice surface with the extra large dressing rooms and referees rooms. So if you look at the Sims dressing rooms, for example, they'll be twice that size. Um, a walking track on the second level, a warming room above the playing surface, also on the second level with wheelchair access, which is again why the elevator is in this uh, one of these tenders. 2,400 square feet, square foot uh, community room. Washrooms, you worship for outdoor field sports, so they're playing rugby or soccer, what have you outside. There's washroom availability at the back of the building. And the building will be climate controlled for the summer season sports and activities, and there's lots of, lots of storage spaces. And your worship, uh, the, the, the facility will be uh, designed so it's net zero ready. So just to, just to give the, the new councils a little bit of an update, that's where this facility's going. I think the, the residents will be very proud of it. There's been a lot of work done into it, a lot of design put into this. Uh, so we're very proud of, of the, the end product, and now it's getting these tenders out the door and getting started. So if there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them, your worship. Councillor Beck, take the floor. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, for a facility that's going to be squarely in our backyard, I'm pretty excited about something like that coming. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I am happy about, because uh, one of the things that I did hear from various residents was the, the community room aspect, which I think has been missing in Charlottetown, and I'm glad to hear that uh, there was a lot of uh, requests for the community rooms, a lot of requests for the walking track. So glad to see those uh, units incorporated. Um, and it, it's interesting in watching the, um, as Simmons came down, or the pool came down, the emotions that sort of evoked in the uh, memories that it created for people. So looking forward to uh, future memories being created from this facility. So thank you for the work on that. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Beck. Okay. Do you want to read the first resolution there, <clears throat> CAO Donald Bernard? Moved by Councillor Bernard and seconded by Councillor Ramsey. That as per the recently advertised tender for Simmons Sports Centre Arena and Pool Replacement, tender package number three, elevator and lift package, the city accept the bid of $123,640 plus applicable taxes for the elevator from TK Elevator Canada Limited. Questions called, so please cast your vote. See, I can. All votes in? Okay, 10 0. Moved by Councillor Bernard and seconded by Councillor Ramsey. That is, per the recently advertised tender for Simmons Sports Centre Arena and Pool Replacement, tender package number four concrete underground services and site preparation package, the city accept the bid of $2,637,000 plus applicable taxes from Fitzgerald and Snow 2010 Limited. Question, questions, call, oh, no, no. question, Councilor Tweel, go ahead. No. Yeah, just one second, Councilor Tweel, how do I get, okay, just one sec. Uh, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead there now, Councilor Twill. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Will, will the new pool have the same square footage as the older pool, or will it be bigger? I'm pretty sure it's bigger, but I'll leave that to Matt. Your Worship, <clears throat> the new pool is actually a like six lane pool. So the old pool was an L shaped pool. So, and it wasn't quite the exact specs. So this one technically won't be bigger, but it's going to be an official size six lane pool. 25 meters. 25 meters, yeah. yeah. Whereas the, the old Simmons for 25, and then there was the L shape that gave it a little more, but it was for the sm smaller children, yeah. Uh, the old had six lanes. Yeah, it did. It had six lanes, because the Bluefins used it in the summertime for their competition. Yeah, I don't believe it was official though. There was six yeah. lanes put in, but it wasn't an official size. This yeah. is an official size six. They made six pool, out of it. Or six yeah. lane pool. Councillor McAleer. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Just uh, curious, and if it's a fair question or not, but um, um, how many tenders would have been submitted on this uh, request? Is that, would there have been? Oh, sorry. It's in your background. McLean's and Fitz and Snow. 
Thank you. Okay, just one second. Call the vote. Yeah, just I'm just trying to get him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, votes ready. Questions being called. Please vote. All in. Okay. Ten zero. You got the next one there, Donna. <clears throat> yes, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Bernard and seconded by Councillor Ramsey that as per the recently advertised tender for Simmons Sports Centre Arena and Pool Replacement, tender package number five, pool package, the city accept a bid of $1,877,300 plus applicable taxes from Acapulco Pools Limited. Acapulco. Acapulco. Questions called. Okay. Please. Cast your vote. Nope, okay, just one second. Okay, uh, there we go, and let's... <laughs> nope, just one second. No, it's still c coming up to zero. No, I'm doing what I'm supposed to, but it's not working. Yeah, just put your hands up, please. Do the old-fashioned way, 10-0. Shouldn't keep doing that. <laughs> Anything else, Councillor? Uh... Yeah, I can give another update. Uh, the artificial ice rink, that's now the location. For the ice patch, if you drive by there now, you'll see where the ice pad's going to go, and <laughs> all the sod and everything's been laid right up to uh, the ice pad. So right now, you worship, we're just awaiting the arrival of the chiller and the artificial ice pad to uh, get the surface up and running. So uh, whenever that arrives, they'll be right at it to get it up and going. I'm not sure when that's going to arrive, but that's between that's with us and Canada Games. Okay, thank you, Councilor Beck. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just count a question for you, Councillor Bernard. Uh, um, after, and this is a, 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 a down the road question, um, when it comes to after the completion of the rink and stuff like that and all the landscaping and streetscaping and all that, uh, when does that get uh, um, incorporated, addressed, designed, whatever it may be? Because I know there is some concern from area residents about uh, uh, potential light pollution, that sort of thing, looking at streetscaping ideas. Where does that fall in on the whole Simmons project in terms of looking at that? Is that a, uh, where does that, wh when does that come into play? So, Councilor Beck, if I got you right, you, you, you're, you're talking about the, at, at, when the project is, is completed, then, then the enumeration of all the, uh, the land around it, the siding, stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would assume that that's part of the project. Um, so th so that will be in the springtime. So right now, I believe the schedule was for January 24 for the rink to open. So from that, from in that spring, I, sus I suspect that all that uh, remediation will be, will be completed in the spring. So then they'll be laying down the sod, they'll have it all nice and clean. I also think there's, there's some conversations going to be happening with, I know there's some concerns about some trails. It's a trail leading to the facility, to the schools, to the neighborhood. I think that's, that conversation will still have to happen. But as far as the remediation, that would be part of the contracts. Okay. So. We want it looking good. We hmm. want it looking good. Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing what. Okay. So we can move on to water and wastewater. Councillor Duran. Thanks, Frank. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Uh, the Water and Sewer Utility Committee did not meet in November. And we have our assistant manager here um, today. There's no resolutions for your consideration, but if you have any questions uh, between the two of us, we'll try to answer them as best we can. Thank you. Councilor Toyo. Uh, thank you, Councilor Ron, for your report. As you can recall at the last Water and Sewer Committee meeting and the gentleman attended that particular meeting. I challenged uh, our ma manager 
senior management team uh, regarding the flooding down in Queen Street to come up with uh, a mechanism, a pumping mechanism, that would automatically kick in to, to move that flow of water so that it's not rising. It's actually somehow being encouraged to, to flow to another destination. And, and I recall you were there. And I was wondering, sir, did you have an opportunity to look into uh, a mechanism of, of that nature or that, that magnitude that would uh, be able to handle that, that amount of water? Just, Councilor Duran, is it, thank you. I think you have to go through the chair. Oh, sir. No problem. Thank you for your question, Councilor Twio. Um, you know, since we didn't meet, uh, we, we never really sat down as a committee. This, this would be a, a major undertaking, and I, and I know you've been talking about it for months or years or, or, or whatever, but uh, I, I don't think it's fair to put our assistant manager you know, on the line right now to come up with an idea. I think this would be something that the new committee could sit down and with consultation with yourself or, you know, if, if I get on the committee and work towards this. It's not just going to be a, a quick fix. Uh, this is going to be a, a, an in-depth process. Um, you're not just going to sit there with a switch and divert all the water. So I think this, this is going to take a bit of time, and with all due respect to our assistant manager, I just don't want to put him on the line, and else he does have the answer. But I, th no. I think no, no, I, I think Mr. This, no. I, I think this would be something that their new yeah. committee uh, could, could deal with. And, and Mr. You. Chair, that's why it's always best to go through the chair, because the chair speaks for the committee. Mr. McGinnis, I understand your position, but uh, good answer. You want to follow up there? Supplementary question? Okay, okay. I appreciate what you're saying as the chair of the committee, but I was wondering, uh, you know, in terms of preliminary, uh, any preliminary work or any, any, uh, any ideas or any options? I know that we haven't uh, put any... No, just, uh, Mr. McInnes, I'm just going to go through the chair again. Okay, Please, okay, no, no, okay, has I'll to go, go through, through the, chair. the chair. Yeah. Thank Mr. You chair, can you, can you just answer that? I think yes. you've already answered it, but I, can you read it? With all due respect, thank you. this is going to take a bit of time. Thank you. And I, I don't want to put the pressure no. on the assistant manager or manager right now to come yeah. up with a, a, a marvelous decision. I think, you know, at the new committee, we, we can sit down and we'll go through it thoroughly, and you'll be well, well uh, informed about where we're going. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's best just to leave it there, because I, I talked to Richard uh, numerous times this month, and they're working on it. but. The answer is not there just yet. Yeah, so I yeah. think it'd be best. And again, Mr. Place. Chair, uh, Councilor Drawn, is that all that's in the report? That's it? You, d you didn't meet, right? So there's nothing else? No. There's, oh, okay. There's, there's nothing else. So no resolutions. We can move on. Yeah. Economic Development Tourism Event Management Committee. Councilor McCabe. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, we the Economic Development, Tourism, and Event Management Committee has not met, met since our last council meeting. The Arts Advisory Board did not meet since the last meeting of council either. Um, just a few brief updates to provide uh, council with. Staff will be participating in Immigrant and Refugee Services Association of PI Newcomers Support Focus Group in the new year along with other communities and municipal partners. Topics of discussion will include labor supply, innovation and employment support, youth well-being trends, and tacking discrimination, multi-municipal leadership responses, and housing supply and affordability. I think it ties in nicely with the committee that you're hoping to plug into, too. Staff attended the National Tourism Congress late last month, along with other Charlottetown partners. There was some good news for the industry, which is still recovering post-pandemic with Destination Canada sharing that all indicators are pointing to tourism being counter-cyclical <laughs> and anticipated to thrive despite, despite inflation. Domestic tourism is expected to recover to pre-pandemic levels nationally by 2024, transborder tourism by 2025, and international tourism by 2026. We're in the midst of the Charlottetown Christmas Festival with the city's next signature event being Capital New Year in partnership with Founders Hall and the Market. On top of the Christmas Festival, for those who have missed it, our Charlottetown Christmas Festival, which is a product of Discover Charlottetown in partnership with the city, was named the second best Christmas market in Canada by Big Seven travel rankings last week, as well as 40th in the world. While the accolade speaks specifically about Christmas market, 
in Charlottetown's case, the entire festival received the accolade. And I think it's something that we can be very proud of. And thank you to our staff and the department for all their work and partnership. And that outdoor rink will add a lot more to it. Yes. Any questions? Councilor Tweel. Thank you. Can you uh, please give me an update as to the uh, parking incentive, free parking for downtown uh, Charlottetown um, uh, when the program began and how much progress has been made uh, to help help with the uh, help assisting the businesses in the downtown? To be direct no I can't um, <laughs> I don't have that information with me to know when the parking initiative started or when um, or if I know we did have discussion about what we were going to do and we felt that we were going to park that until the new council again came into play and I think that will be something for the new committee uh, to discuss moving forward to have something a little bit more consistent and solid in place across departments thank you Councilor McCabe great answer okay Environment and Sustainability, Councillor Tweel. Your report, sir. However, um, it's been a very productive and very progressive uh, uh, two years since becoming the chair of the committee. A lot of good things have happened, like the switch program, uh, the uh, active transportation pathway, the completion along Riverside Drive. Uh, up uh, Brackley Point Road to to the airport, um, some other some other programs. For example, uh, some of the things we're going to be looked to in the future. Uh, the the electrical buses will take take shape and take effect. Um, 2024, I think, will be the first time in the history of this city that we'll see electric buses. That'll be the new fleet. Uh, that'll that'll start the new facility uh, will get underway uh, to provide maintenance for these new electrical buses. I don't have the timeline and time frames. That's that's another major project that this uh, department is undertaking, and uh, and now with uh, the impact and effect of Fiona, you know our our whole uh, sense of uh, what we think of trees and. The future of trees in our city and and public engagement when it comes to trees, especially uh, trees that have come down. The, the the size of these trees are astronomical, and the damage that's been caused in some of the neighborhoods. Uh, we're going to have to reimagine and rethink, um, you know, the planting of new trees. And we're still doing cleanups. Uh, I don't even think we're halfway done as far as uh, some of the trees in the program that we introduced back in October, program that's, uh, I believe, funded by the federal government, uh, channeled down through the province. We've administered the program. I think it's a good program. I, I did ask our CAO if we could sit down with the other two levels of government, because I, I believe that there are some, uh, some obstacles with respect to uh, the program. For example, uh, we can remove trees on private property, but we can't do anything about the uh, these tree trunks or stumps or whatever you want to call them. And some some of them are just the size of them are just. I, I I think it's I think it's too cumbersome for a property owners to take on the expense of trying to remove some of these uh, these stumps. Uh, we have stumps that are down. Apparently, some of them are private, just inside the sidewalk. Um, there's there's many many. Many challenges, so I, I think the new committee will uh, be able to uh, take take some of those challenges and, and hopefully work with the other two levels of government to see what we can increase uh, funding opportunities and to eliminate some of those uh, some of those obstacles. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. I do want to thank our staff uh, for all the good work they've done since Fiona. Uh, there's still more work to be done, but when you look at uh, the work that has been accomplished. Uh, it's, it's been tremendous. Our own city workers, uh, Maritime Electric, uh, the contractors that come in from outside of province, they've come in from all over and they've done uh, inc incredible work. Uh, but still, there are a lot of cha challenges for our uh, property owners. 
and I would certainly like to do a lot more to assist them and to help them because the costs, as I said earlier, are astronomical. So somewhere along the line, we've got to be innovative and, and try to help our, uh, help our landowners, single family homes, to deal with uh, some of the challenges. You know, uh, if, if a tree comes down on a fence, we can't do anything about it. If a tree comes down on a, on a barn or a house, well, we can't do anything about it. Um, there's still many, many, many challenges. So I look forward to some of those solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Twill. Any questions? Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Twill, I'm just wondering on the switch program. Um, is that only the provincial funding with the city, or is, or is the federal funding in that also, in some of the grants? Councillor Twill. That's a good question. Um, I, I know provincially they're involved. Uh, yeah, through you, Jessica. Mr. Chair, the SWITCH program is funded through FCM and in partnership with the province. So I just wondered, I've got a couple of calls over the weekend where people have went through the SWITCH program. Um, but there seems to be an issue with the SWITCH program when they've also applied for the federal grant. That has nothing to do with the SWITCH program. So they've got a whole new set of papers to fill out that the, the switch program basically seems like it's provincial city. And so I thought they were all going to be enveloped into one. Yes. So if you go through the switch program, they'll guide you through all the rates that you can get. So they'll guide you through the paperwork to get your federal well, rebates. That's in what's addition. not happening. That's why I brought it up. Okay. Yeah. So you can have them reach out to me and okay. I can help them with that. Perfect. Thanks. Is that all right, Councilor Twill? Jessica, is there any more information about the provincial, federal, that's, the provincial is looking at a program and we're going to be working on that with our partners. Yeah, yeah so you're speaking of the provincial program that they just launched? Yeah, the provincial um, yeah, for heat so, pumps. Um, for the new councillors in the room, we offer a switch program, which is a 0% interest loan to residents to do energy upgrades of a whole bunch of different kinds. And recently, the province announced a 0% interest loan program um, just for heat pumps. So Mayor Brown, the Mayor of Stratford, and the Mayor of Summerside have been communicating because we are already delivering programs that offer that. So now we're trying to coordinate and collaborate. So there's a bit of streamlining in that. So we're not both offering the same program and confusing. There's a lot of stuff happening out there. And to do because the feds, the province, and us are all offering. Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Rosa. So, um, do we have staff here in the building that work on the switch program, or they're mostly from Nova Scotia? We have an energy management engineer. Oh, yes, okay. So it is possible in the future we could put on a workshop at, at the local community centers or what have you for those that may want to come in and yes, get, get up on the information. And yeah. so Case Atlantic out of Nova Scotia is kind of like our consultant on the project. Okay. And they also offered to come to PEI to offer a workshop in the new year. Yeah. Councilor Twill. Uh, Councilor Bernard, we did put on uh, workshops previously with respect to the SWITCH program over the last year, year and a half. Um, I think we held one out at the Hillsborough Community Center. I also attended one over in Stratford as well. So, uh, you know, we've certainly uh, done, I think, a pretty good job in getting that message out. And uh, a lot of our residents have taken full advantage of the SWITCH program. Um, I know what you're saying about uh, the, the other two levels of government making announcements. So hopefully we're not, uh, you know, what's the phrase around here? Working in silos, that we are working collaboratively and uh, working together so that there's not confusion out there in the community. And if there is, I think, uh, you know, the new committee and our CAO can have those discussions with the province to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Good. Silos are for farms. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Councillor Twill. I, 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 just, I just think that... Uh, that was about a year ago, and I think a lot of things have changed within the SWITCH program. I think that's why some are getting a little confused, and that's why I think it would be great to have another one, but uh, 
that's why I brought it up. It seems to have changed a bit. Yeah. The program changes all the time. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No yeah. Question. Knowledge is power there, Councillor Fuel. Knowledge is power. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Uh, thank you, Jessica, for all the work you do. Merry Christmas. Strategic priorities. Council Ramsey. Jeez, he's up. Man, oh man. Go, Your Worship. We met on November 21st. The draft minutes are in your package. The youth engagement did not meet since the last council meeting. There are no resolutions, and we got the procedure by law second reading tonight, Your Worship. Correct. And at this time, before we get into that, uh, it'll be my last time standing, I think. I, I don't think Donna's going to hit me with anything else. I'd like to wish all our fellow councillors, you and yourself, Mayor, and everything from the Ramsey household and all our residents and staff, a very Merry Christmas. This will be our last time we meet till January. Thank you. No. 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 <laughs> We're going to meet in the 19th, Kev. Kevin Councilor Ramsey, yeah, 19th, yeah. <laughs> Fourth Monday, that's what she's wanted. Fourth Monday, the month. <laughs> I need you here. Uh, we had to move it back. You want to come? <laughs> 26? No, not going to happen. <laughs> so, Donna, can you do the second reading, please? Yes, Your Worship. I'd be delighted. This is to amend the City of Charlottetown Procedure Bylaw number 2018-19, in which the mayor may establish from among the members of council such standing and ad hoc committees as he consider appropriate. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Charlottetown procedural bylaw by be read a second time and that the said bylaw now be approved and adopted. Moved by Councillor Ramsley and seconded by Councillor Tweel. Shall it carry? Okay, so I'll have to get a raise of hands, please. All those in favor, please put up your hand. Nine, those against, Councillor Durant, so it's nine one. No, that's no, it. I think so. That's it. It's done. Okay, the next report is finance and audit and tendering. Who is presenting the report? Uh, Your Worship, there wasn't anyone from that committee here. Oh, are you there, Councillor Ramsey? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Councillor Ramsey is the super counselor. <laughs> huh? He I'm doesn't work in silos. <laughs> Me and Scotty, the, the finance and auditing did not meet since our last, and there's no resolutions. This is an easy one to say, I guess. And that's it, Your Worship. Any questions, we'll certainly entertain them. New business. So under new business, we have a resolution. And then we also have the committees and the terms of references for the committees that will be passed out to you under new business. But do you want to deal with this resolution first, Donna? Sure, Your Worship. So could you just give a little bit of background, please? Your Worship, uh, the MGA requires that the selection committee for the CAO be appointed by council. Traditionally, uh, this has been the mayor traditionally the past two times that it's three times has happened has been the mayor, the deputy mayor, and the chair of HR. Um, in discussions with you, that's was what we we talked about and uh, and so that's what the resolution is here to read is here. Read the resolution, sure. then we'll ask for any questions. Moved by Councillor Yankoff and seconded by Councillor Bernard. The pursuant to section 4.2 of the City of Charlton staffing bylaw, the selection committee for the Chief Administrative Officer for the City of Charlton be comprised of the following. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Chair of Human Resources. Okay, Councillor Duran and then Councillor McKay. Councillor Duran. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Uh, I just have a couple of questions about this. Um, you know, it refers to Section 4.2 of the City of Charlottetown Staffing Bylaw. <laughs> and uh, the Section 4.2 states the selection committee for the CAO will be determined by uh, resolution of council, which this does say. But Section 4.1 of the staffing bylaw, the council shall appoint 
the CAO by resolution. The selection committee to determine this position may include persons outside of the City Council who possess a specific expertise deemed beneficial in assisting the hiring process. So this to me means that uh, the Council determines the committee and, and not as what is in place here. Um, you know, for the, for the newer people coming in, if you were to read this, you would think that's what 4.2 of the, uh, the staffing bylaw states. And this is a, uh, a huge appointment. You know, it's, it's the most important appointment and the only appointment that the uh, council is involved in, uh, or as it stated previously. And what I'm saying is if we just have three people in, uh, you know, it's my understanding that the company that we've hired gets it to five or gets it down. And these three work with the company to, to get it um, down to, say, five, right? So what I'm saying is how come more of the council, if not all, can be involved in this? Um, you know, if, if we do it to three people, you know, you're only getting a certain perspective uh, of, of what you're looking for, whereas if all 11 were involved, you know, we, we would be informed by the company and, and, you know, we could all have our input. So, you know, I, I'm just wondering if someone could explain that to me. Could, could I just start, Donna? I know you have some background information. No, no. Did Andrew from Boyden do a call out to all members of council to get their views on the selection process? Did, did he? Okay. Did Boyden also do a call out to business owners, operators in the city of Charlottetown, NGOs, to get their input? They asked us for a list, Your Worship, and apparently a survey was sent out to approximately 25 um, groups in the city of Charlottetown who might have an interest in the CAO's position. Plus, they also sent the survey out to all city staff as well. Okay. And... Your corporate history, Donna, would tell you that uh, you've worked with three members, four members of a selection committee. Can you give us some background? I haven't really worked with them before because I haven't been involved in the hiring process previously, Your Worship. But um, just uh, what will happen is that uh, Ann Boyden will go through all of the resumes and they will come up with a, a list of people who, one, are qualified as per the job description, and two, they've created, uh, after all of the, the, the discussions that they've had with the counselors, with the, with the community groups, with the staff, uh, a, 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 a picture of what the next CAO sh could look like for the city of Charlottetown. So in reviewing each of the applicants, they, they keep that in mind. Boydens will present later this week to the selection committee a list of, uh, I'm not exactly sure how many, it's called the long list, it could be 10, it could be 12, that they will review with the selection committee. The selection committee will look at that group of, and say, okay, I'd like to interview them all, I'd like to interview two of them, whatever the selection committee might decide. I would anticipate in the five to six range, I don't know. That's what they, that's what they told us usually happens in this kind of a process. Boyden's told us that that is usually happens in this kind of a process. The week after next, it's scheduled for those interviews to be held. Um, uh, and they will be held by the selection committee, and the selection committee will meet then to make a, determine, a determination of how many will be sent, will be forwarded to council for interviews um, and council, it'll then will be a full council who will look at whether it's one, two, three, whatever the number the selection committee decides to bring into council. Councilor McCabe, can I just go? Councilor Drum will come back to you. Councilor McCabe, so and just then Councilor. Point of clarification. So basically, there will be an opportunity for all of council to kind of look at at least two or three candidates to determine the final. I, again, as a full council, we're responsible for the hiring, we're responsible for the firing, so I think it is very important that we all have, and I know Councillor Tweels felt this, that we all have the opportunity to ask a question or hear what their philosophy yeah. and, and uh, 
output would be. Thank you. Council will make the final decision. Yeah, but it's nice to hear. <laughs> Councilor Beck. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I do share somewhat Councilor Duran's concerns uh, about scope. Um, it's been fairly well articulated that this is a very powerful position, a very important position. Um, I, I think when you're, it seems to me that if we're looking at representation, we have representation all from council. We don't have community representation. We don't have city staff representation who are going to be working very closely and in direct collaboration and cooperation with. So uh, I, uh, for such an important role, I guess I would like to have um, as broad of a perspective as we could catch in order to come up with the best person that we can get for this position. I, I agree with all the uh, Boynton finding, you know, slimming it down, long list, short list, having the opportunity to come back for council to have input and question about that. But I think at that meaty part of it, I guess, if you will, uh, where the, 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 the major legwork's being done, um, I would be in support of a, a broader, broadening the, broadening the scope, broadening the perspective, and uh, hopefully coming up with the best candidate that we could get. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Brown. I, I appreciate that, Councillor uh, Beck. You know, like I stated before, this is this is the one, if not the most important um, employees of the city. Um, you know, this this is what drove me to come back. You know, as, as a as a, a councillor to say, okay, I'll be part of this process, and and we're going to get a good CAO and and they, whether it's a, a female or a male, they're going to come in, we're going to work well with them. Uh, it's going to be the face of the city and it, it's a great starting point. And I'd hate to be, you know, not part of the committee uh, and sitting back and, and go with two or three people who have a probably a great perspective, but, you know, uh, you know, you take a, the appointment of the chair tonight, well, they're going to be involved in it. And, you know, to me, it's very easy to get the council to be involved, to get a presentation here. We all get our vote um, to, to get it down to a certain number. Uh, you know, I, I just think this is a great way to start off uh, with this council is to everyone to have their input and not just have your input on two or three. You know, if it's 10 that are qualified, let's, let's get everybody's input here so we can all work together because this is going to be the face of the city for the next little while. And this, for this reason, is, is I want to be a part of it. And I think my other fellow councillors, you'll do well to be a part of this decision. It's a major decision. So uh, I just ask for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duran. Councillor Beck, and then Councillor and Deputy Mayor Yankov. Yeah, just to clarify, I'm not looking for total council involvement in this. I'm, I'm just looking for broadening the perspective to maybe staff and community representation. So just, just to clarify that. Thank you, sir. Uh, Deputy Mayor Yankov. Although I agree with all of your comments, I do just want to point out that the, um, the city city taxpayers have paid a lot of money to have this recruiting company and they come with a pretty long um, uh, resume of their successes and that is their wheelhouse and as counselors although we should be part of it it is our decision at the end I would think that we should have some level of trust within this recruiting company um, to be able to um, have them shortlist this, if you will. Um, but I do um, look to any other comments from the rest of the council. Thank you. C Councilor Bernard. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I was going to similar, say, say something similar. It's just that the Boyden was a company that we had hired, a uh, highly reputable company. I do think that uh, it would be nice to come back with a number that we all get to interview, whether that's three, whether that's four. Uh, I think one other time it was just a two, and, and, and possibly for us, I'm not interested in interesting 10 and 11. You know, that's what Boyden's there for, to, to screen them out. But I think the number, we should know what that number is, whether it's three or whether it's four. Uh, personally, I prefer four. But if we can come back with a number that we all get to interview, because obviously Boyden, and, and, and as, as the Deputy Mayor said, they're a highly reputable company. <clears throat> Put your trust in them. I know the interviews that I've had with them, uh, a lot of really good quality questions. You can tell they know what they're doing. Uh, so uh, I have confidence that they will get the, the best people. Uh, but it'd be nice for our role as councillors to uh, be able to interview the final four. Thank you. And just, Donna, just clarify this. So section four, point, section four subsection 4.1 of the staff and bylaw, um, that the council shall appoint the chief administrative officer by, by, uh, by resolution. The selection committee determined this position may include persons. I think what we did, we did this the opposite. Because we're at going the end of a council, the end of the last council, Actually, the selection committee should have been appointed first, and then Boyden should have been followed up. But we started the process because we wanted to get this done right away. And Donna has repeatedly told us, I'm not here forever a day. I want to get moving on with my grandchildren and, and, and family so I can understand. So that's right. And, and so 4.1 really is Boyden. Boyden was selected as the, the, the outside group, and again, we did, Boyden did reach out to NGOs, business community staff, and the councillors to get their input. So I'm very much appreciative. But again, Councillor Tweel, Councillor Bernard, I recall, vividly recall when we appointed Roy Main that we did have three of the finalists come into this chamber, and each of us had two questions each, and we were to ask those questions and then made a decision. So look, I'm open to, to, to make this uh, flexible, but you know, we, we have to look at all of our own schedules and look at the time frame that we want to get this finished because I want to get a new CAO in as soon as possible. Not haste, waste, I know that, but I just want to keep the process going. Do you want to follow up? Yeah, so you, you have to press your button. Okay, got it. it Go ahead. Just, just, uh, have the new councillors had an opportunity to be interviewed by Bo Boyden? So will I have that opportunity? So, so did Matar interview the new councillors? Did Boyden interview the new councillors? Going to be interviewed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was just during the election. Okay. okay. Councillor McLear. Yeah, Your Worship. Just um, you know, I agree with fellow councillors, um, Deputy Mayor uh, Jankoff. Uh, Bob Norman, um, you know, I certainly feel, you know, uh, uh, very similar in that um, hopefully uh, best efforts can be put forward, to, you know, to get it right. And um, if we can kind of maybe fine tune the process of, of what this is kind of going to look like, you know, at the end and, you know, who's a part of it. Um, uh, I think we're hopefully we're close here on, you know, on the process. And, and if it has to be tweaked a little bit um, in terms of, you um, more collaboration with council and, and it, it being um, you know part of it as it as it funnels down um, would be uh, would be uh, worth uh, considering. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McLear. Councillor Beck. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I guess just in I, I appreciate the expediency factor and all that. Um, I'm more focused on getting it right. I guess. Um, I guess the other, I guess the question I would have, uh, and I, I have no problem with all the Boyden, or is it Boyden, I'm sorry, Boyden, the work that they're doing. I appreciate all that, and I trust that they, they are a very well-respected company. You've, they've been vetted properly. I, I, I'm fine with all that part. I'm, I'm just, uh, if we were to move, I'm looking at the composition of this committee. If the committee was to be moved and to be expanded to say five, to bring in staff representation, to bring in community representation, is that possible? 
or if it is possible, how long would that take to do? What would that look like? I'm again, I'm a little unfamiliar being new to the position, how that could potentially unfold. Hey, Donna, if you yeah, could Donna, can you answer. please uh, address his question? This is, this is a, definitely a personal opinion, Councillor Beck. Um, I, I, would be, I would be very nervous about having a staff person picking out their boss. Whatever. Um, you know, like, I mean, the committee may ask, I've never sat in before. The committee may ask me because I have no, no, what is it? No, vested no vested in, no skin in the game. <laughs> they may come in and say, will you sit in and, 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 oh, yeah. uh, um, and it, the community has had a, quite a, an opportunity already to participate in the, in the project. If we were to extend it out, I suppose we could go the, go and ask the president of the chamber of commerce or if they would be available or something like that. But it would require another meeting, and 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 this, pro, you know, it, it all things can be done. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Um, just one second, Councilor Ramsey. Yeah, uh, Donna just answered the the other one question because we don't get to sort of choose our own boss, I guess, and and it'd be sort of tough if a staff member was sitting on it. And then if they favored someone or did not favor someone, like I, like that's our only hire and our only fire. And if it's the board and brings it down to a certain number of five, six, eight, and we have to interview them, and we're not, and we think we have more questions, I think we have the opportunity to bring that person back in again, like to get the proper answer that we thought we didn't hear or things along that line. But we have to get it right. I'm like Councilor Drong and everyone else. We got to get it right, and. <clears throat> But at, at the same time, I really, do, I, I really don't think staff should be involved in this. Thank you. Councilor Drawn. Thank you, Mayor Brown. It's just, uh, you know, I don't have much more to say about it. It's, it's just like how you started, you know, with your address to me. You know, we could get it down to two people. Well, I, I don't think two is the number. You know, if, if we could agree on five, you know, if there's that many uh, qualified people, um, that might be something and that's why I'm saying with the with the council being involved you know we're talking about expediating uh, you know this process My, this process has been going on for months Donna's here for another two months or a couple of months um, you know we're not in a panic to make a decision tonight like like a, what I'm saying is we talk about openness transparency collaboration Let's get the council involved in this so we can all make an informed decision, whether it's five uh, applicants, you know, which would be a great number to get down to. And then, you know, I, I just know the last time I felt, in my own opinion, the process wasn't terrific. We didn't get to ask questions. Now, this time, <clears throat> I think everybody's ready to ask questions. So, you know, that's, that's all I have to say about it. I just want more people involved so we don't lose a couple due to, you know, a conflict of, of, you know, you don't like the person or, you know, they don't like your brother or whatever it is. You know, I just find that if we have everybody around the table to make this one decision, the whole city is going to be better, better off for it. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Duran, thank you. Councillor Twill. Um, just to kind of build on what Councillor Beck said about having more people involved at the, at the last meeting um, when we were looking at setting up the selections committee or looking at the credentials of, of you know what the new candidate will look like I stress that I strongly believe that the candidate besides having years of experience should also have a master's in public administration so uh, maybe we can engage with someone from Hel Henson College over at Dalhousie uh, to participate on the selections committee because they would have the credentials to be involved with such an exercise to narrow it down. <clears throat> and you know, Councilor Duran talked about five, you know, five potential or five candidates coming in to meet with council. I, w I would support that. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe we can give consideration to engaging with someone from Henson College uh, that, you know, this is the line of business that they're in. Uh, you can't, you can't have someone from a particular interest group 
regardless of where they're from, but Henson College, um, uh, someone with a master's in uh, public administration, to my mind, would be advantageous to the selections committee. So if council wants to take that under consideration, I, th I think it would be a big help to the committee. I really do. So, uh, yeah, if you wanted to expand to four, uh, representation from, from Henson College, I think, would, would play a very indispensable role. Um, and five, five, and then the other thing was, you know, was referenced about when we, when we uh, interviewed Roy Main, uh, the questions had to be the same for, the, for all three candidates. We couldn't really have that flexibility to be able to ask different questions. All the questions had to be the same. So I'm not, you know, it's, it's hard to get, get outside of that. I would like, personally, I'd like to get outside of that and ask questions, you know, questions that we're dealing with here at, at a regular monthly meeting of council because, you know, the CAO plays that uh, critical role on how the services are going to roll out to the community, whether it's, uh, whether it be operational, whether it be capital projects, I mean, the challenges that we're dealing with today are, are going to continue to grow and, and working with the other two levels of government. I mean, that candidate has to have the skill set to be able to work with the other two levels of government, to be able to work with okay. Chamber of Commerce and <coughs> unions, union representation, and, and such a broad, broad perspective. Yeah. So I, I really would encourage yeah. Mr. Mayor that the selections committee be expanded to the outside and, and maybe a professor, a professor from, uh, from Henson College at Dalhousie. Yeah. I, I think it'd be a yeah. real big help to the, to the committee. Yeah. I, I do stress, I'd like to have someone sitting around that table with a master's in public administration. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, Councilor Twill, I had someone that said that they should have an MBA, so do we go to the Sobe School of Business, SMU? I, I think... I think I know that, but someone was calling, asking about an MBA. Councilor McCabe. Okay, thank you. Um, we're already at the end of the selection process. The applications have been closed. We have hired a recruiting company to come and gather all the information. We've all had the chance to talk. I'm going back to say we kind of, someone mentioned tonight we missed 4.1. Technically, we should have had a committee established before we hired Biden or Bowden to do the uh, recruiting process. So really, to me, it sounds like I don't even know why we need a committee at this point, because we've already moved to section 4.2, and why don't we ask Bowden to come in with five applicants that are qualified to be the CAO for the city of Charlottetown. The <laughs> expectation could be they come and present to full council chamber and we'd all have two questions that we can ask and Councilor Tweel, these questions have to be standardized ethically, responsibly. You can't just have general chit chat off the cuff when you're hiring a CAO for the city. It has to be a formalized, it has to be consistent and fair when you're in this process. You cannot ask questions just about off the cusp. It has to be consistent and fair um, ethically. So uh, my suggestion would be we propose instead of having, oh, a com having a selection committee, I don't really even see the sense of having a selection committee if he's going to propose five names that we can come here with and, and meet and hear. Five, three, what? I'm sorry, and maybe I'm missing something. Well, just that uh, I think that the, he'll be coming with what he calls the long list to the selection committee, um, which they will review, and then they will determine to whether they want to interview nine, seven, six, five, four, and they will conduct those interviews, pick out of that group the number that will come to council. So it's a there will. <coughs> no, the selection committee. Boyden will come. Yeah. So Boyden will go through, find the nine most qualified applications, or 10 or 11, whatever it is, bring those to the selection committee on paper. The selection committee will look at those, narrow it, narrow it down to five, six, seven, whatever the number that that selection committee decides that, are, that they think are, 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 are qualified then they will interview those 
that number of people. Out of that number of people, they, they may say there's only one person that they think is qualified, there, or they may say that there's five of them qualified, whatever that selection committee would recommend to bring to council. I mean, it, it, it's when you have the interview that you really find out how the person, you know, like how the person, how, how, how the person strikes you. I mean, there may be some, so that the selection committee would make, would make the decision on how many would come to council for review, for in, in, an interview. Traditionally, what differently than what Boyden has done and has, ex, and has advised, what he normally would do is, given all the information <coughs> that he's collected, they will ask the questions, and then if you have a supplementary, I assume they would allow you to do that. Deputy Mayor Yankoff, take the floor. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, great, great collaborative conversation. I might suggest, and whatever one's thoughts are on this, that we add a friendly amendment to our resolution that would include our acting CAO, since she clearly has absolutely no skin in the game, and that would give us a representation within the staffing without causing conflict with existing staff, and that we also add into that friendly amendment that at least four are brought back for all of council to then be able to participate and listen to Borden, do the interviews, and then each of us at that time also have the opportunity to ask those questions. And I'm just wondering if, if I could move that amendment and if there was anyone out there that would consider seconding it. Yeah. So the friendly amendment is, uh, the, the resolution is moved by Deputy Mayor Yankoff, seconded by Councillor Bernard. So Councillor Bernard, do you agree with the friendly, friendly amendment? Yes, I, I, I have no problem with that. I think that's, that's, that's going the right route. I mean, so. at the end of the day, you know, council had agreed to hire Boyden for what reason? Well, they have the uh, qualifications, and they have the staff to recommend to us. So, you know what, we talked earlier about three or four, so I I'm fine with four, yeah? And I think that Donna Odell would be fantastic to have on that committee, yeah, with, the, with her knowledge and experience. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm glad to second it. So, Donna, could you just uh, just read off the friendly amendments? be added to the selection committee and that the committee be required, uh, the selection committee uh, bring back four qualified applicants to council for interviews. Yeah. Okay. So the resolution with the friendly amendments on the floor, Councillor Tweel, you have the floor. Well, since we're doing friendly amendments, I'll come back and reiterate what I said earlier. I really think it's advantageous to have um, an academic sitting at the table as well. And I'll reiterate, uh, it'd be nice to have someone from Henson College to give us that outside academic perspective. I mean, look, they're, they're teaching courses in municipal politics and, and uh, they're very well aware of the challenges that are facing municipal governments across Canada, you know, uh, the United States, all over the world. It's an international program. I can only see uh, positive attributes of having someone of that caliber sitting with the with the selections committee. I can only see, uh, you know, being positive and giving insights and, and bringing perspectives to the table that is outside of this corporation, but nonetheless give an indispensable, critical perspective to the selections committee. I, I say that in all sincerity, and 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 I really believe. Uh, that is something that we should strive for. So I'll add that as an amendment as well. Well, anyway, I think it's important, Council. I really do. Councillor Councillor McAleer, Councillor Beck, and then yeah, Deputy Mayor Yankoff. I'm just wondering again, in, in including more Council in some part of the process of of whittling whittling it, getting it down to a number of candidates that. Uh, a committee, you know, would interview. Is it is it possible or a consideration to have council part of the part of the the, the selection of nine or identifying, you know, a, you know, uh, you know, a set number to 
is that reasonable? And then um, just uh, just in the vein of of council being been uh, more aware of the uh, uh, candidates uh, uh, and making sure that uh, you know we're trying to get to the best uh, best selection uh, in the in this process. Okay. Yeah, there is. It's it's a friendly amendment. So that. Yeah, so the friendly amendment includes Donna Waddell, Act and CAO, and that the selection committee bring back uh, four, at least four candidates to council. And Councilor McAleer in the past, it's been two or three anyways. So this, we're just up in the number. Councilor Norman Beck. Uh, sorry, Your Worship, does it say at least four or no, no it, more it, than four? It does, it, yes, bring back four candidates. Bring back four candidates. Sorry. Okay. Um, I, I think as we go through this process, as we flush out this discussion, things kind of are percolating in my mind. I, I would, I think we just leave it at, I would be supportive of just leaving it at the three, uh, leaving it there, uh, going ahead with it. Um, we are ultimately responsible for them, but at the end of the day, um, I, I wouldn't support the amendment as outlined. Uh, the one thing I'm wondering about, if we, or if we limit it a four, I mean, it'd be wonderful if, if there if there were five, if there mm -hmm. were five really good candidates, if there were six really good candidates. Again, I don't want to bound the selection committee with that, uh, pending on who does come back for recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Beck. Okay, so I believe we have to vote on the friendly amendments first. So the two friendly amendments are on the floor. And they include Donna Waddell as Act and CAO, correct? And that would make four members, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Chair of Human Resources Committee plus Donna Waddell, and that the, and that the committee bring back four candidates to council, correct? So the friendly amendments on the floor, all, and I'm just going to use it by hands. All those of uh, Trevor, I, I, Trevor, you're not, you're finally coming up, Trevor. So, tr Trevor, do you want to speak to the friendly amendments? Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, it's the wording of the amendment that I'm kind of questioning, and Councillor Beck mentioned about where it says four. What if we don't have four successful candidates, and if it's not in the resolution, how clear is it of how many are going to come back? So should the wording be changed? It doesn't say that in the res in the amendment. So I'm just it says bring back four candidates. So if that does include four candidates, we know it could be three, it could be two, but four is, I believe, the upper limit, correct? Yeah. So should we say up to four? Or to So does the mover, seconder agree with up to four? For the sake of clarity, um, uh, had a good point. Up to four. I mean, if something terrible happened that there just weren't four, yeah. you don't want to. Yep. Yeah, so up to four. Does that work for you, yeah. Councillor yeah. McKinnon? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So again, the, the two amendments, the two friendly amendments, Donna Waddell, Act and CAO, and that the selection committee bring back up to four candidates to council. Questions call on the, okay. All those in favor of the, the amendments. Okay, so I have McCabe. I have uh, Councillor McKinnon, Councillor McTart, Councillor Ramsey, Councillor Bernard, and Deputy Mayor Cody. All those against. Uh, please get this down. Tracy, so Councillors Tweel, uh, Beck, uh, Duran, and McAleer against the friendly amendment. So the friendly amendment stands. So the resolution on the floor, Donna, is what you already included the here, oh, including the amendments. So questions called on the on the floor on the on the on the selection. All those in favor, please put up your hand for the selection committee. Yeah, the, four, the plus the, the friendly amendments. Yes, all those in favor, please put up your hand. Okay, so I'm going to read out the names in favor. Councillor McCabe, 
Councillor uh, Beck, Councillor McKinnon, Councillor Matard, Councillor Ramsey, Councillor Bernard, Deputy Mayor Yankov. All those against. Councillor Tweel, Councillor Duran, Councillor McLe McLear. Ten to seven to three. Correct. Okay. Councillor John McLear, MAC. Yeah, okay. Okay. So Donna, do you, under new business, do you want to, are we passing out the committees? Would you like me to pass it out right now, or would you like to make the announcement first? Uh, do you want to read them out? Okay. <laughs> so, we will be passing out the committees, and here are the committees. Economic Tourism and Cultural Development, Chair, Councillor Kevin Ramsey, member, members at large, Councillor McAleer and Councillor Tweel. Um, Environment Sustainability, Chair, Councillor Terry Bernard, Members at Large, uh, Councillors Duran, McKinnon, uh, Finance, Audit, Tender, and Administration, Chair, Councillor John McAleer, uh, Members at Large, Councillors Duran and Julie McCabe, Human Resources, Chair, Councillor Justin Matart, uh, Members at Large, Councillor Norman Beck, Councillor Terry Bernard, Parks, Recreation, Leisure Activities, Councillor Tweel, Councillor Justin Matard, Councillor Councillor Bernard, Planning and Heritage, um, Deputy Mayor Alana Yankov, Councillor McCabe, Councillor Beck, Protective and Emergency Services, Councillor Trevor McKinnon, Deputy Mayor Yankov, Councillor Ramsey, Public Works, Councillor McCabe, Councillor Tweel, Councillor McAleer. Strategic Priorities, Communications, and Intergovernmental Cooperation. Chair, Councillor Norman Beck. Members at large, Councillor Deputy Mayor Yankov and Councillor McKinnon. Water and Wastewater, Water and Sewer. Chair, Councillor Bob Duran. Councillors Justin Matart and Councillor Kevin Ramsey. Members at large. And I believe that um, Sue Fraser did hand out the terms of references. Very quiet here. Councillor Ramsey. Yeah, just uh, as is, we found out recently that the mayor does not make quorum at any Correct. of the committee meetings, but if, he, if he's there, which he probably will be, he never missed one yet, but he, he, he can vote. Yes. At the committee meeting. But if, for example, if Councillor Drong and I and like Councillor McAleer were there, I mean, we don't get to wait for the the whole thing. No, you don't. We can you just don't. carry right on. You no, carry I, on. I, I, I business, explain that to the business as usual. Right on. Yeah. That's covered in the Municipal Government Act that the Office of the Mayor does have a vote on all the standing committees, but does not, but does not constitute quorum. He can vote. Or she. Yeah. And with the members at three, the quorum is only two. That's all that's required. So, um, as we re recall from the last council, some councillors, like Councillor Ramsey, I think, sat on five, six committees, and uh, it was a lot of work. And other councillors sat on four committees, five committees. So, I think this makes it a little less burdensome. 
Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you very much. Next meeting is the 19th.